Hello again. In this tutorial, I will be talking about compressor limiter gates, okay, um, and how to use them, and you know why. Why is it for? Um, I explain you basically that it it's for three basic things: to handle the dynamic of your voice through your microphone, you know, in like low and louder parts. Now. Um, I'm talking with my lapel mic now, then I will go with my Rode Broadcaster. But imagine you're talking to the microphone and sometimes you whisper and, you know, for example, in a part you say, Whoa, that's a great news! Well, that is the, low, the, the, lower, the lower and louder part. So the compressor takes care of that and to make that, that dynamic range more in a more proximity way so that it get more stable it gives you a more stable signal of the low the lower and the louder parts then i say gate gate is a noise gate it handles the silence when you don't talk every microphone has a, a self noise so what and no matter if you have, you know, I'm, I am in a, an acoustically treated room, but if it if wouldn't be the case, well, the noise gate just cuts off any signal, any signal, any self noise, any room noise, and it's like there w wouldn't be volume at all. And the, the limiter takes care of um, getting um, or avoiding s th that the signal clip clips in the final mix. If you are doing podcasts, if you are doing radio, whether terrestrial radio, online radio, going live, you want a constant level of clarity of the signal. Not to mention if you podcast is spoken, because audio is the 100% of your content. And if the audio is spoken, you want to get um, a good clarity of signal, whether you speak with more or less loudness yourself. It doesn't matter. You want clarity. Well, the compressor will handle that job. Um, you have to think not on you, your environment, but your audience, okay? So, your, your audience might be listening to, you, listening to you with cheapy headphones or in a good computer with good audio interface and with pro headphones. Might be listening to you with an iPod, with, your, with a cell phone, with hi-fi equipment. So, for all that, you want the same type of quality, no matter the device uh, you hear the show or podcast. Uh, you want the audience to hear, you know, depending on the device they use, to hear in a stable quality, a reasonable stable quality. Uh, imagine your voice unprocessed uh, going lower in some parts and louder in some others. Go to your audience, think of your audience, and if they are listening with a cheap gear, they won't be comfortable with that unprocessed sound. So, this is a video if you want to upgrade um, your um, uh, the audio of your content, podcast, radio show, as I said. Um, I will be doing uh, the demonstration with an uh, outboard uh, compressor limiter gate, but if you are recording your show or podcast, well, you can do it um, then in post. Um, but, well, as I'm going live, most of the times I use it uh, with an outboard compressor. The settings will be the same. You can save it and um, use it for your post 
if you record your shows. A last mention, I say this with audio because it, it happens the same with visual content. Imagine, I don't know, a 10 minute video, 15 minute video, a length, an hour length video with that in some parts the, vis the vision is unfocused, then focused, then at three minutes later it's unfocused again, then focused, then unfocused. Oh, you get fed up with that and you pass to another video. Well, you don't want that situation happen with your podcast or your audio content. Here is a short example of what is or, or how is uh, an unprocessed first um, audio example and then processed with using my Rode Broadcaster and my compressor limiter gate. Welcome to my podcast. This is episode uh, 35 and today we'll be talking about criminal laws and how they are uh, applied in different countries. Uh, oh, hello, Michael. Wait a second. I'm just um, in the opening. Yeah, uh, Michael is the guest for today. He's a lawyer, specialist in criminal laws, and he'll be explaining a little bit uh, the topic of our episode for today. Welcome to my podcast. This is episode 35 and today we'll be talking about criminal laws and how they're applied in different countries. Oh, hello, Michael. Uh, wait a second, just in the opening. Um, Michael is the guest for today. He's a lawyer, a specialist in criminal laws, and he'll be explaining a little bit the topic of our episode for today. The thing is, you need a mixer with... Um not only a compressor limiter gate, of course, uh, but a mixer with an insert point, which I'll show you in a moment. Now, here, I, here I'm on my mixer, mixing board. An insert point is basically, I explained this in another video, the channel, the channel this is the channel where I have the, the mic I will be using in this video. You're still hearing me uh, through my lapel mic. It, you know, it has the mic plugged in, a line level input that I don't use because I have a microphone here, and an insert. This is insert. I don't know if you can see there. It says, yes, yeah, that's it, insert. You need a cable that in one end has, let me place it here, two rings. Imagine that the first ring and in the other end it has two jacks with one ring. Okay, so this one, this first ring sends the dry signal to one of the jacks of the other end and plug that other end into the input of your compressor and the channel of the compressor. Then the other end of the cable, it has another one ring quarter ring jack. You plug that in the output of the channel of the compressor and that signal comes back in this ring already processed the above ring. So I will plug it and this is the best way of working with a compressor limiter gate. Okay? Now before I go to the compressor with um, the microphone, the Rode Broadcaster radio microphone plugged in, I will mention that if your mixer doesn't have an insert, in some forums, I read that you can use the auxiliary section. Remember that I told you that the signal of the microphone I'm pointing, when you use an insert point, cuts here, sends the signal to the, to the compressor, dry, and gets back here, already processed, and then goes all the way down already processed. So if you don't have that insert in your mixer or 
your mixing board, yeah. Uh, well, some people say you can use this pipeline here called AUX. My mixer has two auxiliaries, you know, one and two. Two auxiliaries per channel. Okay, it's, a, it's an, a, like a an horizontal pipeline of audio taken from every channel and this finishes in an AUX send one general master control so if no matter what no matter how louder this could be I may I must make sure that the AUX one send general master knob is giving level to the output and of course there is an output you can see that the pipe the pipeline finishes with those well i'm using that for skype and for telephone landline telephone but imagine i'm imagine i'm not using uh, those auxiliary outs and they are free you have two jacks for send okay so you send for example the auxiliary one adjust the general and you use this send with a single cable quartering jack you plug to the input of the compressor and the output of the compressor well another feature your mixer must have is a return you see return you see that both are free one one I'm pointing it here one and two L and R one and two and the volumes for those returns are here return you see aux one it controls what it's coming from return one master of return one and this is the return to or stereo because you can connect a stereo signal here well in that case you don't use the blue one you use the one that says a stereo return but imagine you plug the back the output sorry of your uh, compressor here and you turn the return up so that what the compressor does return to the mixing board now the thing is this kind of connection is made the one of the auxiliaries is made thinking of signal effects processors like reverbs reverb um, delay echo you know those kind of effects not for compressors why well, because in that case, what would happen is that the compressor will give you, okay, a kind of signal processed, but the signal will be at the same time in the channel with the um, unprocessed signal. So you will have both, both um, signals. The signal you now you you get without processing it and a signal a bit processed so it won't the compressor won't give you its best if you use auxiliaries so i strongly recommend you to have a mixer with insert points there are cheap uh, mixers with inserts so uh, try to look for them um, you know, I can name one, uh, the Behringer, I think it's the 1002B, uh, it has two mono channels, uh, and those two mono channels have inserts. So the important thing is that you have to upgrade your sound and to have inserts. So now let's go to the action and let's move to the compressor. Okay. Now, I'm using my Rode Broadcaster and as you can see, um, you are watching now the channel 1 of my compressor limiter gate and is completely set now as if the compressor 
is not doing anything. So my voice is completely as if the compressor would be unplugged completely. Okay. The first knob you'll find, which is the one I'm pointing right now, is the noise gate. The noise gate just gets rid of whatever sound is in the room. Okay. So if you start by turning it up, you see that the sound will disappear. I will um, not be. I will not talk so that you hear. Now, you. I recommend you to use a pair of headphones uh, right now so that you can hear what this does. So whether you have. Um, you have uh, an outboard, ge outboard gear or uh, you make this in post, you will find a plugin that is called, you know, now noise gate or gate. Well, I use it as this is a condenser microphone and it's very sensitive. I use it in minus between minus 30 dB, minus 20 dB. So whenever the microphone, um, whenever the compressor hears that is uh, a sign of silence below that setting, well, as you can see, the gate is, when I talk, it turns green, as you can see, the green here, here, and when it's closed, the noise gate is red. Now, the next section is the compressor. The compressor has uh, certain parameters. The first one is called threshold. The threshold, what, what does it mean? Well, it's, it sets by decibels where you can, where you want, where, at what, at, at which point you want the compressor starts to work, to react. Okay? So I said it, you know, the voice, the human voice normally um goes in less 5 less 10 db but if you want to get a good compression and your voice your spoken show to be stable well you want a very a very heavy compression so that no matter if your audience is listening to you by with a cheap but with a cheap um um you know, player or with your computer, the quality will be stable and the same and the clarity will be stable and the same. Well, I compress the hell out of it. I use uh, this setting in this model of the this compressor in less, almost less, um, uh, less 30, less 20 maybe. You will be hearing how the, the voice and the, the signal will, it, you know, is changing a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, I am setting the compression, okay? The next thing is the ratio. What is the ratio? Well, it tells you how many decibels passing above the threshold will suffer attenuation, or in other words, will be lowered by the compressor if as it as it is now one to one there is no compression if i use two to one that means that every two decibels passing by the threshold the compressor will lower one db and so on three four five well i use mine in eight you can see this in eight. So that's compressing the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a heavy compression. Some audio engineers already con consider this set as limiting rather than compressing. As you can imagine, this process reduces a certain amount of the original input signal getting into the compressor before starting to set the levels. Uh, that's why it has... Uh, where am I? Um, 
here it has an output gain also called recovery or makeup gain because it's a way of getting back the level you lost by adjusting the compression the compression settings okay so that would be how i was before and here i have i have enabled this switch called enhancer because it gives you you know another feature of compressors are attack and release they should be fast at least for spoken word so that it sounds more natural this compressor doesn't have an independent um uh, knob for uh, setting the attack and release so this enhancer do an automatically um natural attack and release but if you happen to have a compressor that you can set the attack and release they should be fast okay they should be very close to zero um and the last but not least knob is the peak limiter which i have as you can see it in zero dv because i don't want that any signal passing through zero goes back to my mixer that's that is how i avoid the microphone to clip in the in the signal so here you hear how how radio friendly sounds or radio like sounds my voice so that if you want to improve your podcast or your radio station whether it be terrestrial or online radio show for spoken purposes well i think this is the best professional way of doing it uh, if you like the video subscribe my channel hope you like it and thanks for watching until next time